Good morning, everybody. Like uh, Todd was saying, this is a, a historical moment. Buenos días a todos. <laughs> Como Todd estaba diciendo, este es un momento histórico in the life of Cornerstone, in la vida de Cornerstone. I've been here since, since 2007. He estado aquí desde 2007. And we never had a moment like this. Nunca habíamos tenido un momento como este. So, primeramente, quiero dar gracias a Dios. First of all, I want to give thanks uh, to God. Y so thankful uh, for the leadership sensitivity. Eh, muy agradecido por la sensibilidad de liderazgo uh, here at Cornerstone, aquí en Cornerstone. Uh, al Espíritu Santo, to the Holy Spirit, uh, for us to experience and express today the gospel expression of unity within diversity. Amen. Amen. Por darnos la oportunidad de poder expresar expresiones del Evangelio basados en la unidad eh, dentro de la diversidad. Uh, I want you to know that this is a humble uh, opportunity for me. Esa es una oportunidad muy humilde. Eh, ser parte de los ancianos at uh, Cornerstone, to be part of the eldership at Cornerstone. Uh, I take it very, very highly and very deeply, very responsibly. Lo tomo muy elevado, muy profundo y muy responsablemente in what we are trying to do today, what we are doing today, lo que estamos haciendo hoy. But let me tell you why I believe uh, this is an opportunity for us to display the gospel together. Y déjeme explicarle por qué creo que esta es una oportunidad de mostrar el evangelio juntos. I probably will never commit to this responsibility at this church. Posiblemente nunca me comprometería a esta responsabilidad en la iglesia if I didn't understand the heart of the leadership at Cornerstone. Si no entendería el corazón de liderazgo a Cornerstone, en Cornerstone. Number one, number uno, their commitment to the gospel. Su compromiso con el Evangelio. That's what attracts me to be part of the church and to be part of this leadership. Eso es lo que me atrae a mí de ser parte de este liderazgo y esta iglesia is their commitment to the gospel. If it wasn't that, si no fuera eso, I won't be here and I won't be here standing before you. No estaría aquí ni estaría frente a ustedes. I have seen the, way, the same way they have seen me, de la misma manera que ellos me han visto a mí, I also have seen them. Second, their commitment to God's word, to scripture, the truth of the gospel. Segundo, es su compromiso con las escrituras, con la verdad, las verdades del evangelio. Si no estuviésemos comprometidos, if we were not committed to that, I won't be here today. I can serve anywhere else. Puedo servir en cualquier lugar. But I want to be where these things are present. Quiero estar donde estas cosas están presentes. Especially in days like this. Especially in the times that we are living. Especialmente en días como estos y el tiempo que estamos viviendo. Number three. Their love and commitment to the church. If he, I, I, the, the bride of Christ, la novia de Cristo, is the most precious group in the world. Es el grupo más precioso en el mundo. There is no other group in the world like the church. No hay otro grupo como la iglesia. It's the bride of Christ. It's la novia de Cristo. Win by his and purchased by his blood. Fue ganada con su sangre y comprada con su sangre. So their commitment to love the church. Now you have to distinguish love from strategy. Tienes, tienes que distinguir amor y estrategia. Sometimes we equate lack of love for lack of a strategy. Muchas veces nosotros eh, unimos o igualamos 
eh, falta de amor con estrategia. And we are not perfect when it comes to strategies and vision implementation. I think you know that. <laughs> Yo creo que usted sabe eso. But that doesn't mean that there is no love for the church. Pero eso no quiere decir de que no hay amor por la iglesia. The church of God. La iglesia del Señor. Lo, the other thing that I really uh, am excited about is, so I, this is the fifth point. I want to make sure that you know this. This is el punto número cinco. Quiero asegurarme que usted sepa eso. Why this is happening. Por qué está pasando esto. Their sensitivity to unity, and I already mentioned before, within diversity. So the, la sensibilidad de ellos de unidad en, di, in di, en la diversidad. Why? ¿Por qué? Because that honors Christ. Eso honra a Cristo. That, dis, that is a beautiful display of the gospel. Es una manera de mostrar el evangelio bellamente. For that, you can read Galatians 3, 26 to 28 when you have time for it. Pero quiero asegurar algo que quede en sus corazones. I want to make sure there's something that, that you take in your heart with you. And for that, I wanted to read 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It says like this. Quiero leer Primera de Corintios, capítulo... 10, versículo 31. This is the foundation from which we initiate any ministry efforts. Esa es la fundación de donde nosotros emprendemos todo esfuerzo ministerial. Because it's not about us. Es no es acerca de nosotros. It's about Jesus. No es acerca de honrarnos a nosotros mismos. It's not about honoring ourselves. It's not about us taking the credit that has belonged to Jesus. No es acerca de nosotros tomarnos el crédito que pertenece a Jesucristo. And he says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Do we agree on that? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> si pues coméis o bebéis o hacéis otra cosa, hacedlo todo para la gloria de Dios. I believe that unity honors God, glorifies God. Love glorifies God. Others focus glorifies God. The proclamation of the gospel glorifies God. Authentic worship glorifies God. To have a high view of his word, of his word glorifies God. So creo que lo que honra a Dios es amor, unidad, enfocados en otros, la proclamación del evangelio, una adoración auténtica y tener un concepto elevado de la palabra de Dios. But that's not the, uh, the passage that we're going to be looking at today. I wanted to see two, two verses or three in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 to 11. Quiero ver los versículos, 1 de Corintios, capítulo 15, versículo 9 al 10, al 11. Y una de las cosas, one of the things that I wanted you to think is that we are who we are by God's grace. Amen? Somos lo que somos por la gracia de Dios. We are who we are by God's grace. It's a gift for us. And these two verses I want you to think about. Uh, en estos dos versículos quiero que usted piense que uh, a medida que Pablo... The way Pablo began to talk about it and about himself, Paul's humility. Cuando Pablo habla acerca de sí mismo y de, eh, y de su humildad que podemos ver ahí, his call to the ministry, he begins to elevate uh, grace in the process. 
Empieza a elevar la gracia. And that's what I love about this passage. It's also in response to verse 8 that we're not going to read, but Paul's humility is también una respuesta en versículo 8, pero la humildad de Pablo not only elevates grace, but elevates the church. No solamente eleva eh, gracia, pero eleva también la iglesia. Also elevates hard work. También eleva el trabajo duro, trabajo fuerte. And we need to understand that. So, and he is saying in that passage that we're going to read very soon. He está diciendo en ese pasaje that he is not motivated by guilt because he persecuted the church. Él no está motivado por culpabilidad que porque percibió a la iglesia. He is motivated by grace. Él es motivado por la gracia. His understanding of grace motivates him to work and serve. And his response is love and service to the church. Y su respuesta es una, una, una respuesta de amor y servicio a la iglesia. So that's important for us to know how Paul communicates about his call in ministry. So if we go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9 to 11, it says, For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, but it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was or they, so we preach and so you believe. Porque yo soy el más pequeño de los apóstoles que no soy digno de ser llamado apóstol porque perseguí a la iglesia de Dios. Pero por la gracia de Dios soy lo que soy y su gracia no ha sido en vano para conmigo. Antes he trabajado más que todos ellos, pero no yo, sino la gracia de Dios conmigo porque o sea yo o sean ellos. Así predicamos y así habéis querido. As you can see, reading in Spanish is a lot easier for me. <laughs> I hope you don't need translation after the sermon. Espero que no necesite traducción después del sermón. So in view of God's grace, en vista de la gracia de Dios, Paul begins to elevate the church, the nature of the church, the identity of the church, the purpose and the mission and also in high view of leadership. Pablo empieza a ver la iglesia, la naturaleza de la iglesia, la identidad de la iglesia, el propósito de la iglesia, la misión de la iglesia, a medida que él también ve el liderazgo para servir dentro de la iglesia, to serve within the church. So Paul sees that clearly and his humility. So Pablo ve eso claramente y en su humildad he says, I, for I am the least of the apostles. I am the least. Why unworthy to, to be called an apostle? Because I persecuted the church of God. That means he is elevating the church. Está elevando la iglesia. Porque yo perseguí la iglesia. That's why I am not worthy of this call. But because of God's grace. Pero por la gracia de Dios. That's why he is who he is because of God's grace. So he wants to elevate God's grace by saying, I'm the least of the apostles. I am not worthy of this call. Él quiere elevar la gracia del Señor al decir que no es. Él es el menor de los apóstoles. Que no merece ser llamado. So I'm just amazed by Paul's humility and I want you to know that I believe that's the humility that was displayed and is displayed here too. We don't believe we are worthy to be called if it wasn't for God's grace. 
Ese es también lo que se muestra acá, que no es por nuestros méritos, sino que es por la gracia del Señor. So he persecuted the church, so he elevates the church, and by God's grace I am who I am or what I am. Por la gracia del Señor soy lo que soy. He came persecuting Christians. So he said, I'm not, I'm not worthy. Él vino a perseguir a los cristianos. He said, yo no soy worthy. But he left loving them. Pero se, fu se fue amándolos a él. And that's, that's how he's communicating God's grace. It was not in vain with me. La gracia del Señor no fue en vano. He went from a persecutor to proclaim the gospel. Él pasó de ser un perseguidor de la iglesia a un proclamador del evangelio. He came hating Christians. And I say, now he loves them like crazy. I think you heard that term before. <laughs> oh, because he had an encounter. Yo creo que usted escuchó ese término antes. Oh, because he had an encounter with the resurrected Jesus. Amen. Todo porque tuvo un encuentro con el Cristo resucitado. You can never be the same after you have an encounter with the resurrected Christ. Amen. No, no puede ser el mismo. No puede ser el mismo. You cannot be the same. Your mind will change. Tu, tu mente va a cambiar. Tu corazón va a cambiar. Your heart will, will change. Your attitude will change. Tu actitud va a cambiar. Everything will change. Todo va a cambiar. If you remain the same, si tú te mantienes el mismo, maybe you haven't had an encounter with the resurrected Jesus. A lo mejor no has tenido un encuentro con el Cristo resucitado. And today you can have it here. Amen. Today he's right here. Él está aquí. Lo puedes tener hoy aquí. So Paul is saying, my response, my response to that grace is, first of all, I need to acknowledge. Primero, su respuesta es, I need to acknowledge that I am not worthy if it wasn't for that grace. Necesito responder que yo no sería, no sería capaz o sería calificado si no fuere por esa gracia. Second, I cannot serve the church. I will never be able to serve the church or qualify to serve the church. No podría yo servir a la iglesia, estar calificado para servir a la iglesia if it wasn't for that grace. I will never qualify to serve the church if it wasn't for that grace. Paul also said the reason why I work hard is because I am motivated by his grace. La razón por la que yo trabajo duro es porque soy motivado por su gracia. People who understand God's grace, la gente que entiende la gracia de Cristo, they work hard in the ministry. La gente que entiende la gracia de Dios trabaja fuerte en el ministerio because they know, they know, they understand grace, we understand grace. Entendemos la gracia that if it wasn't for his grace, we won't be here today. Que si no fuese por su gracia, no estaríamos aquí ahora. So by God's grace, we are here today. Amen. Amen. Now, how are we going to respond to that knowledge and understanding of grace? ¿Cómo vamos a responder nosotros a ese conocimiento de la gracia? First of all, we respond by humbling ourselves. Amen? Amen. That's what Paul did, did. He humbled himself. He said, I'm not worthy. Se humilló y dijo, I'm not worthy. And secondly, oh, let me translate. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo se humilló y dijo, no merezco yo ser llamado al apostolado. So when you understand grace, grace will never lead you to passivity. La gracia nunca te va a guiar a pasividad. 
God's grace is going to lead you to work hard because that's how we respond when we understand grace. It's our love and service to Jesus. And the best place to display that is his church. So respondemos, cuando entendemos la gracia, respondemos con humildad, con amor y servicio. Y el mejor lugar para nosotros manifestar eso es la iglesia del Señor. This is the church of God. It's not our church. Esta no es nuestra iglesia. Esta es la iglesia de Dios. Amen. This is the church of God. And each one of you, y cada uno de ustedes, you are a gift to the church. Eres un regalo a la iglesia. The gift is not the gift. El regalo no es el regalo. The gift is the gifted individual that has been placed in the body of Christ. El regalo no es el regalo. Es el, la persona que está dotada por ese regalo. Para servir en la iglesia. To serve the church. And we are all different. Todos somos diferentes. So Paul, he understands all that. That the body of Christ is not just any group. El cuerpo de Cristo no es cualquier grupo de personas. This is a very special group of people. Este es un grupo muy especial. If not, go to Ephesians 5, 25 to 33, and you're going to see the beauty of the church. Si no, vaya a Efesios capítulo 5, versículo 25 al 33, y va a ver la belleza de la iglesia. How is beautified by Jesus. Como la iglesia está embellecida por Cristo. And continues to be beautify the church. Y continúa embelleciendo esa church, but one day to present that church to himself, para un día presentarse esa iglesia a sí mismo, even more beautiful. Amen. Amen. Doesn't mean we are perfect. The Lord continues to work in our hearts. Eso no quiere decir que somos perfectos. El Señor continúa trabajando en nuestras vidas. But when you understand grace and you get closer to the church, heart. Cuando usted entiende la gracia y se acerca al corazón de la iglesia, you see the beauty of the church. But when you create a gap or a distance, cuando usted abre una brecha y una distancia entre la iglesia y usted from, from the heart, de su corazón, you create a distance, and then you begin to see the spiritual deficiencies of the church. When you create a distance from the church. Cuando tú creas esa distancia de la iglesia, empiezas a ver las deficiencias espirituales de la iglesia. Starting to see the beauty of the church, you begin to see the spiritual deficiencies of the church. So think about it. So piénselo. That the closer you get to the heart of the church, understanding grace, que a medida que usted se acerca al corazón de la iglesia, the heart of Jesus for his bride, Whatever you do with the church matters to Jesus. Lo que usted haga con la iglesia le importa a Cristo. It matters to Jesus. You cannot do anything against the church or in, in favor of the church or to benefit the church. No puede hacer algo en contra de la iglesia, a favor de la iglesia, de Jesus. It doesn't matter what you do with it. No. Paul is a perfect example of that. Pablo es un ejemplo perfecto de eso. So, God's grace will never lead us to passivity. I'm not saying this to confront you. Uh, gracia nunca nos va a guiar a pasividad y no le digo esto para confrontarlo. No, I'm not saying this to confront you. This is not a confrontational time. No es un tiempo de confrontación. Es the reality of the gospel, the reality of grace, la realidad del evangelio, la, la realidad de la gracia de Cristo. We are called to serve him. Hemos, llamado a servi hemos sido llamados a servirle. Hemos sido llamados a predicar el evangelio. We have been called to preach the gospel. And this is not one man show. 
Y este no es una demostración de un solo hombre, una sola mujer. There is no Jew, no hay judío, there is no Greek, there is no slave, no hay esclavo, there is no free, there is no man, there is no woman. We are all in Christ. No hay hombre, no hay mujer. We are spiritually equal. We have the same access, the same salvation, the same power, the same, the same God, the same Holy Spirit, the same gospel. All of us. Amen. 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 We are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Somos unos, tenemos el mismo Dios, el mismo Evangelio, la misma gracia, el mismo poder. Uno en Cristo. And I lost track of the time, so I better finish. <laughs> Because in, if not, they're not going to invite me again. To read. <laughs> so, verse 11, I just want to say, say this. What matters is that we present the gospel, that we preach the gospel. And people believe. What amazing, right? Lo que importa es que presentamos el evangelio y las personas creen. We have the most powerful message. Tenemos el mensaje más poderoso that transforms the heart of people, que transforma el corazón de las personas. That reconciles people with God, que reconcilia a las personas con, con Dios. And it gives salvation, da salvación, and eternal life, and vida eterna. Amen? Amen. Why not preach the message? ¿Por qué no predicar ese mensaje? Why not model the gospel? ¿Por qué no modelar el evangelio? The gospel is perfect. El evangelio es perfecto. Los dones son perfectos. The gifts are perfect. But the recipients are imperfect. <laughs> Pero los recipientes de todo eso somos imperfectos. But God continues to work in our hearts. Dios continúa trabajando en nuestros corazones to make us like his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is a process. Dios continúa trabajando en nosotros para hacernos como su hijo, Jesucristo. Cornerstone, I've been here since 2007. Cornerstone, estoy aquí desde 2007. I stepped out for two years and four months, went to Texas. Fui a Texas por dos años y cuatro meses. Came back, regresé, and guess what? I came back here. <laughs> regresé aquí. Because the five points that I mentioned to you in the beginning. Porque los cinco puntos que yo le mencioné a ustedes al principio. Those five points became, esos cinco puntos, like the criteria for me to evaluate, am I in the right church? Como un criterio para mí evaluar, estoy en la iglesia correcta. Am I serving under the correct leadership? Voy a estar sirviendo bajo el liderazgo correcto. And that was my conclusion. Y mi conclusión fue, I'm not going anywhere else. No voy a irme a otro lugar. And I will finish with this. Think about this. I was not expecting this. I was not coming for, I didn't come for this. But the Lord knew. The Lord knew. My family is here today in the front road. My daughter, her husband, grandkids. My daughter and grandkids and her husband, they live in Texas from the Republic of Texas. <laughs> Came to the Republic of California. <laughs> to be present in this moment. Ellos viajaron para estar presentes en este momento. And also my son and his girlfriend. 
everybody's here. And my beautiful wife, she's right there too. Amen. <laughs> the gospel is amazing. El evangelio es maravilloso. The, es el evangelio es glorioso también. The, the gospel is glorious too. And it's the eternal plan of God. It's the plan eterno de Dios. It's not that God made adjustments at the last minute with the gospel. No que Dios hizo ajustes a última hora con el evangelio. Man, Adam, hey, why you did that? Now I have to adjust everything. <laughs> Adam, Eva, ¿por qué hicieron? Ahora tengo que ajustar todo. No, it's the eternal plan of God. And you are included, in, you were included in his eternal plan. Y usted fue incluido en su plan eterno de Dios. And you were invited, y fue invitado, to God's fiesta. Amen. 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 Cornerstone, I think today I love you more than yesterday. <laughs> I love the leadership today more than ever, too. I have seen their heart and their love for us. So would you please stand with me and let's pray. I hope this was a clear picture of where my heart is. Espero que esto sea un cuadro claro donde mi corazón está. And let's continue to have, continuemos to have a high view of God. Amen? High view of Jesus, Amen. high view of his word, Amen. and a high view of the church Amen. and the mission of the church. We pray. Father, we thank you. Padre, te damos gracias. You are an amazing God. Tú eres un Dios maravilloso. I am amazed by your love and mercy for us. Estoy maravillado por tu amor y tu misericordia para nosotros. Your mercies I knew are new every day. Tu misericordia son nueva cada mañana. Because you continue to be faithful to your promises. We can trust you. Podemos confiar en ti. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.